Wouldn't it be nice to have your backyard or shooting location in Stellarium to help you plan images or visual astronomy? In this video, we will go over how to add panorama images that either you have taken or will help you get the panorama image and add it to Stellarium to upgrade the landscape. And we're going to use Photoshop to do it starting now. Hi there, my name's Dalen. Here at Astro Escape, we go over all things astrophotography starting from the very beginner level and working our way up. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching the video, please consider giving this a like. Let's get started. Stellarium comes with a bunch of landscape textures to choose from and even some fun ones like the moon and Mars. But it's always awesome to have your location as the landscape texture just to help you out. That way you know where the trees are, where your neighbor's house is blocking the sky, whatever the case may be. All right, as we get started, if you already have a panorama image saved, go ahead and just go to the time uh, showing up on the screen right now. If you don't already have one, you have a couple options. And the first one is, if you're going somewhere popular, check Stellarium's website. Some very popular areas like Lowell Observatory or Cherry Springs State Park already have the ground textures and there's not much else you need to do other than just import it in. But if you don't have a panorama image, we're going to go over how you can acquire one. If you are going somewhere that maybe you haven't been to yet or you just don't have the option to go get the image right now. All right, let's assume you've already checked Stellarium's website and they don't have the pano there, but it is still kind of a popular area. You can still add images using Google Maps. So we're gonna go ahead and go into Google Maps. Okay, so I frequent Mingo Creek Park Observatory quite often. Uh, I am part of the club that owns this observatory. What you can do is actually just go into Street View and you can look for the little dots in the area and just check and see if any one of them is a panorama. So like this one is a panorama, but you also want to check the area. So. I usually, when I go to Mingo Creek, actually shoot from around here where this pano is. And it's pretty well along the lines of what um, it looks like when I'm down there. But just keep in mind when you're looking for those multiple uh, spots that you want to find one that is a little bit more along the lines of where you'll be. So the one, the first one from the street is not one you want. Uh, you want one that's in the field. But hey, if where you're gonna be is along a street, then street view images can work too. It'll just give you a baseline idea of what the sky is gonna look like out there. All right, and the other thing you're gonna wanna watch out for too is as you're looking around, keep an eye on the compass uh, down in the bottom right and just make sure that it lines up uh, with how you think it'll look or if you've been there, how it actually does look. Now I know that Polaris actually is somewhere you know, up here uh, over the observatory from that spot on the field. All right, so if you're having problems figuring out where north is, you can just back it out to the satellite view again and then pay attention to the compass and just look and see what is actually north. So for me, it's the building. So I know that that's where I'd want to line things up. So before we move on, we need to save the coordinates and the altitude. In the description, there's text you'll need to copy into Notepad that looks very much like what you're seeing on screen. This text helps Solarium locate the image file and also uses coordinates and altitude so it is location accurate. Just paste it into Notepad and minimize it for now. We'll get back to it here in a minute. All right, so going back into Google Maps to get the coordinates, all you have to do is right click anywhere just very close to where you're going to be shooting and then just click on the coordinates that pop up. This saves it uh, as if you're copying it and then we can move on to the next step. So down in the description, there is a link to earthpoint.us. Go ahead and head over to earthpoint and then in the position box, go ahead and just right, right click and paste those coordinates and then hit calc. All right, after hitting calc, we're gonna see a table pop up and this has the latitude and longitude. What we're gonna do is go to one more website and find the altitude. So going back into the website, we are going to copy to the fourth decimal place, the latitude. Anything beyond that, it doesn't like. And then we're just gonna go to the advanced converter and just paste it in. And make sure you click off the box because it's a little bit finicky about copying and pasting. And then just do the same thing again for the longitude. And then go ahead and hit search and it'll show up roughly where you are. And if you want to, you can scroll in and just verify that it is pretty much exactly where you right clicked on the map on Google Maps. 
And here you have your altitude up at the top. So what you wanna do is copy the altitude in meters and then take it to that notepad and just paste it in without the M. And then we can go ahead and just minimize it again. Back on the EarthPoint website, we do need the latitude and longitude to put into that notepad document. So what we're gonna need is the degrees, minutes, and seconds, and that is the third row here down at the bottom. So all we're gonna do is go ahead and copy the latitude, and we're gonna paste it in. And if you notice here on the notepad, there is a little plus sign. So if you are somewhere where it is plus, make sure that the plus symbol is there. And if there's a minus, you make sure that is there as well. And you also want to get rid of the degree symbol as well and just put a small d there instead. The other thing is get rid of anything past the decimal point at the end. Uh, Stellarium doesn't use it, so you can go ahead and get rid of it. So that way it looks like that. And then just go ahead and do the same thing for longitude. Uh, you can go ahead and save it just so you don't lose anything. Uh, just make sure that you change the file type to all files and then just make sure you save it as landscape.ini. Put it in a new folder somewhere that you know where it's going to be. Go ahead and name that folder the location you want to use. If it has multiple words in that location, make sure there are no spaces. Um, just make sure that it is named landscape.ini and that's all because of how Stellarium reads from that file. It requires landscape.ini so it knows what to find. But go ahead and save it for now and then we'll come back to it in a little bit. All right, so going back to getting the image, now that we have the information related to the image, we have one more website to go to. I know there's a lot of different websites we've been bouncing to, but just bear with me one more time. And that website is for a program called Street View 360. The website looks a little bit like this, so whichever OS you are using, uh, Windows or Mac OS, just go ahead and download the one that you need and then install it. Once you have it installed, there are a few things that we need to go back and do. So go back into that Street View that you are going to use and just copy the URL for it up in the address bar. Then go ahead and open Street View, download 360 and go to the Tools tab. From there, you can just paste in the URL and it will give you this parse panorama ID. You're gonna wanna go ahead and copy that, then go to the panorama download and just click paste. From there, you can click on your the folder icon here to figure out where you want to save it. So I already have uh, a couple here and this will work for me so i'll just go ahead and save this as mingo 360. click save there and don't worry about the resolution here we're actually going to change that in photoshop so just go ahead and click download panorama and while this one downloads for me because it does take a second i want to give uh, credit to pat rieger who is a fellow club member that took this panorama that we're using for this video all right it has been downloaded we see download completed and now we move on to the photoshop part of this all right here we are in photoshop ready to edit this so there are a few things that we need to do first uh, one is resize it and then we have to erase the sky so the first thing we can do uh, is the easy part. We'll go ahead and just get it resized now. So we go ahead and go to image and then image size. And then just make sure that it is linked here. So when we're resizing things for Stellarium to uh, make it e uh, read things a little bit easier, both numbers have to be divisible by two. So 4096 or 2048 or 1024, uh, those are all easily divisible by two and it just helps things run a little bit smoother. And if you ever decide to submit a popular place to the Stellarium website that isn't already there, they will require this. You will not get your submission approved without it. If you have a slower computer, make sure that you use smaller numbers, so like 1024 by 512. Or if you have a decent uh, hefty computer, you can go with larger numbers, 4096 by 2048, uh, so. Uh, it just depends on what you want. The bigger the number, the higher definition, the trees and the grass are gonna look. So you really can just get away with going with the smallest. It doesn't matter too much. But for me, I have a pretty hefty computer, so I'm just going with 4096. And then hitting okay. 
and there we are it is resized all right next we're gonna get rid of the sky so we'll go ahead and just make sure that the layer is unlocked so that way we can edit it and then using the quick selection tool we're just gonna go ahead and hold shift and then just click around over the sky now you'll notice uh, that uh, it does a pretty good job but there are some areas where it did kind of screw up a little bit so in order to fix that we're just gonna go ahead and uh, zoom in and we're just gonna uh, hold alt to back out some of these selections now because these trees have no leaves on them I'm not gonna get super perfect about it I am gonna treat it like there are leaves on these trees a little bit um, it is purely personal choice if you want to get super detailed about the tree line that is your call but you don't have to uh, this is the most time consuming part of this process so uh, do what you will and uh, take some time making it look uh, exact or not All right, once you are comfortable with your selections, just go ahead and press delete. And there we go. Most of the sky is gone. Now, if there are some areas where you want to get a little bit uh, more in depth, you can go through with the eraser brush and just really fine tune. But like I said, uh, along the horizon there, if there's trees in the picture that you have is a treeless picture, then treat it as if there are leaves already on the trees and this is perfectly fine for uh, how I like it. And the other thing is too is if you have a lot of fine details like telephone poles or lines uh, like phone lines and stuff and there are just like little dashes and stuff uh, through the sky just go ahead and touch that up so that way those are taken care of. Alright and that is it with the Photoshop part of the image so all we have to do is take the image and save it into the same folder as the notepad file that we were working on earlier just save it as a .png and you can just name it the location that you want some uh, other guides I've seen says name it landscape.png you don't have to do that you can just name it you know my backyard or in my case mingo.png just make sure it's in the same folder All right, so we're on to the last step. So back in the notepad file, there are a few things in the notepad file you definitely want to change. The first one is the name, which I have highlighted here. That is what you'll see in the list as you're choosing through to get to your landscape. So the description, this can be whatever you want it to be. If you look at other locations such as Geneva, list what's actually showing. Uh, anything after the equal sign show up. Sometimes there are credits to the uh, person who took the image in the description. Type, it needs to be spherical, okay? And the map text, remember how I said we need to save it as a PNG, but it can be the location. As long as this is the name of the erased sky PNG that you made. So in my case, it'll be mingo.png. So for you, it might be mybackyard.png. As long as it's the same thing and it's in that folder, it'll find it. We've already done the latitude and longitude and the altitude. The last thing here is the angle rotators. We're not worrying about that for now. We want to see how it looks in Stellarium as is. We're going to fix that here in a minute. Okay, after we're done with that file, we just want to go ahead and save it and then go to the folder where both things are saved. So your landscape.ini and your image that we've uh, either pulled from Google Maps or edited from one that... Uh, you have taken yourself and then we are going to copy this folder and we're going to go into uh, where Stellarium is installed. So in most cases now with Windows 10, it is program files, Stellarium, and then landscapes is where the, la the uh, landscapes are all saved. And just go ahead and paste your new uh, configuration here into uh, the landscapes folder. It'll yell at you for admin credentials. Just go ahead and just say continue. From there, let's go ahead and open up Stellarium. All right, now that we are in Stellarium, we just need to do a few things. The first is change your location to match where your landscape will be. If you don't know how to do that, check the intro to Stellarium video popping up on the screen right now. And then we're gonna go ahead and go into landscapes and set the landscape to the new one we just made. All right, so opening up the landscapes tab, you should see the name of the location you just added. If not, 
go back to the .ini file and make sure that the map text matches the name of that PNG. I cannot stress the importance of that enough. It will not show up if the file name is not exactly what's in that text file. If this is here, go ahead and click on it. And already I can tell, hey, I'm a little bit here, but now just to help us out as we go through this process, go ahead and check the use this landscape as default box. So it might not line up right away when you first uh, open this up, and we're gonna have to do that rotation thing. So just closing and opening Stellarium, this will help. Now we can go ahead and close the window and start spinning around and making sure things line up. And if you remember earlier, I said that North is actually above the building itself. And well, if you can tell here, it looks <laughs> like it's pointing East. So the way to fix that is go ahead and close out of Stellarium. All right, once we're out of Stellarium, we have to go back into where it's saved in the Stellarium folder. And this is the annoying part. Stellarium doesn't like it when you edit anything in the folder. So uh, it's better to just copy it back out to the initial folder that we had things in. Go ahead and edit this INI file. And what we're gonna wanna do is uh, change the angle rotate Z to any number between zero and 360. Base this on how far off of north things look for you. So if when you looked at the uh, image and it was actually looking south when it should have been looking north just go ahead and put 180 in if it looks like it's a little bit to the east or west then put 90 or 270 in uh, just pick a number put it in so for me i'm doing 90 and uh, we'll go from there so you can save the file and then copy and paste it back in here and when it yells at you just go ahead and say yes and then go ahead and open stellarium back up Popping back in here, it already kind of looks a little bit like it's supposed to. I mean, north is not exact, but it's close. So let me darken it up a little, just so Polaris shows up. All right, so after looking at this, for me, it's fine. It's close enough for my purposes, but if you wanna tweak it just a little bit more here and there to get it exact, that's your call. Once you have north under Polaris or south under Crux, and it's fine for you, then congratulations, you have added your landscape. And just for a question for today, I want to know, what landscape did you add? Did you add somewhere popular? Was it just your backyard? Let me know down in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, subscribe, and then hit that little notification bell so that way YouTube does tell you when I upload the next video. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.